Dragon Master. What's up, guys, and welcome to the Henshin Hangout for Uchu Sentai Q Danger Episode 9 called Burn Bright Dragon Master. One more time with that sexy anime voice. Burn Bright Dragon Master. Burning Finger! Wrong anime. Anyways, dude, I am loving it. It's been a while since I've actually been back on a freaking Henshin Hangout. Now that I think about yeah, it. Yeah, we're dude. like behind. Oh, dude, but you know what? It's such a great show. Matter of fact, man, how are you liking like, Q Ranger so far? I love Q Ranger. I Talk think, to the people about that, man. I think Joe said it best is that it's Guardians of the Galaxy in spandex. This is true. Yeah. This is true. Matter of fact, I, dude, I was we were just talking about, man, these outfits are probably one of my favorite. They ranger suits they are totally my favorite like and just I, seeing them together mm -hmm. like complements each other so well and they, they're so unique they really went all out band of america really like you know um contributed to that and sure. it, it really shows sure even with the and you could tell because i mean obviously this came out around the same time as the power ranger lions game movie right so you could tell like the influence as far as the cockpits and being individualized in certain sections of the zord and that's brilliant because right. in the japanese toys themselves they all light up it is battery operated they have leds and it's a really cool aesthetics even in the show where you do feel like they're in the mecca you do feel like gundam-esque and it, it's Evangelion all it, it moves and, and robotech and all that like you really feel like they're in the cockpits and these tiny little Q balls or Q spheres or whatever you want to Q Dama. Q, Q. Hey, technically, is it Q Tama or Dama? Tama. Tama. Okay, well, Q spheres. Well, in any case, <laughs> the Q spheres. The Q spheres, you know, it's, it's, it's fine. It's fine. And in this episode, we talk a lot about the Q spheres because evidently you could force a henshin and not be an official Q danger. Mm -hmm. And then by the end of the episode, we get Dragon Ball Z, but more on that later. So, in any case, so we have Ryu Commander morphing for the first time. People are like, oh my god, what is this about? And for those who really pay really close attention, it's pretty much the recycled Tokyo suit from Tokyo. Oh yeah. Yeah. It totally is. With a different chest piece and like the dude, one thing I really love about this outfit though is like, do you notice it makes like a whole goatee? Like the visor yeah. goes from here. That's really awesome. And all the way around his chin strap, dude. Like that is so dope to me. Yeah. Real violet. Well well so he turns he's real violet. He is then, real violet. And then Ryu Commander. Oh I'm sorry. <laughs> if you want to get really technical no six T <laughs> But no, absolutely right. So everybody's shocked, like, oh my god, he can hench them. So Rangers retreat, he, he gives a direct order, guys, there's not a lot of time, bounce out. I, I gotta no. be honest with you, Spada's kind of annoying to me, dude. I'm not gonna lie, like, Spada is kind of annoying Spada to me. Spada... He's kind his, of annoying to me. He has his own, um, I really like his character, but then, like, things happen like that, and I'm like, dude, why are you like this? It, to me, it's like, I get what they were trying to do mm -hmm. with, with, with Spada, which is the whole... I'm gonna disobey, but I also know there's more to what it seems, and we have to sometimes disobey to do the right thing. Right. And the whole th the whole time, I'm just thinking like, dude, follow orders. You suck. And guess what? Your butt got captured because of it. Your fault. This entire episode and the entire dilemma, your fault because you didn't leave. And guess what? You sticking behind, didn't even fix anything. Yeah. You literally stuck behind and be like, I knew it. There's a time limit. Yoink, kidnapped. Okay, see you guys later. You made the situation that much worse, buddy. <laughs> That much worse, buddy. You are useless this episode. I'm sorry. Spada needs some redemption from me. Oh, yeah. Spada <laughs> needs some hella redemption from me. Because after this episode, I mean, he's still, you know, he's still a good part of the team. But after this episode... He's after... part of the team. I don't know if he's a good part of the team. His face makes a pointy thing. Good for him. I don't know if he's a good part of the team. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I 100% I agree on that. Shout out to the European use of words like we, see, and chef, okay? Who do I star? Ah. See, this guy is just more like the hard-headed star. That's how I feel. You about know, the, his introduction hard -headed actually, star. in the episodes always like makes me mad because everyone's like <laughs> superstar, um, ninja star, the and chameleon then, star. Yeah, and then it's like food meister. Food meister. That's not a star. You, you ruined it. Your stuff. You. <laughs> he's like that one friend where you're just like, no, no, our, our vibe. You, you messed it up, man. You, Everyone's a star except you. <laughs> he's like, well, <laughs> this is this. He, he's with us. He, he's he's with us. He's, it's yeah. fine. It's well, fine. Well, 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 anyway, his <laughs> dumb butt gets captured, and you know we finally get the backstory as far as yeah why he's able to hench him. Because honestly, the one thing that they try to emphasize on in, in Q Danger is the fact that there's nine 
chosen warrior. So that's a, this is one of the things, especially in this series, that I like yeah. because, like, even in other like shows, like Common uh, Rider Double mm -hmm. or you know other things that have I love I have gimmicks. It's like why don't they ever use these? Why don't they ever combine these? Sure, you know. And here's finally an explanation because there's only those. Chosen nine. Yeah, and it's supposed to be just the nine. And then he's like, oh no, there's this support auxiliary one that I'm going to use to make work. He, but he essentially admits that they forced it. It's yeah. not supposed to work, and that's the reason why he is like a ticking time bomb in a sense. And actually come to find out, this dude, the commander, he started the rebellion, which I think is dope. That's awesome. That's one thing I really love, I do like about Q Danger a lot is the fact that you do a lot, you do have a lot of rich history in the world they establish, whether it's about the dark matter or whether it's about the uh, the structure hierarchy of the magistrates and the the consumers, consumers, <laughs> consumers on the planets, and even who's chosen and destined to right. be wielding of this Q power. You know what I mean? Yeah. And come to find out that this dude was a, a rebellious little dick himself. Yeah. I, I totally... I, just his interaction with, like, everyone else... Um, you know, he he didn't used to be this way. He used to be... Um, he used to live by his own rules. He used to be a hothead. Yeah. He used to be a hot, He used to be, like, lucky without the... Yosha lucky! <laughs> he used to be like that. And now, you know, after, you know, witnessing the death of, like, everyone... Or, Everyone, well, every, well, it's people sacrificing themselves for him. Yeah, dude, he has a. There was a bear commander. I want to see more about this guy. That's oh. that's what I. That seems like foreshadowing. Dude, all I know is there's a bear commander, and it was amazing. And dude, he, he went out like a badass, man. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, he went out like a badass. Most of the time, in like, in, in, I feel like in, in Tokusatsu, anytime people die, you see either a huge explosion or the old uh, sparks. Like, Ugh. Oh, oh no! The slow, he, the he, slow motion. He's gone. He went out. This dude got impaled. <laughs> this dude straight up got impaled and blew himself up. Like that's know, the best death I've ever seen in like freaking like freaking Sentai, dude. Like you know, Marvelous his foot in like Gokaiger when he like stabs foot. Yes. just that. But here, <laughs> but but it's like that, but more amazing. <laughs> But that was a pretty actually. That's a great call because that's such a badass moment in Gokaiger. Marvelous, like straight up stabs his own foot, <laughs> keeps his enemy with him, which is Bosco. That's awesome. And then yeah, that's badass. But this dude gets impaled, hangs on to him, does the Dragon Ball Z Goku and Piccolo thing, and it blows himself up. Like, I'll see you in hell. Boom. <laughs> so that was kind of badass. And we got to see a young um, Ronbo. Yes. Ronbo. So we got to see a young dragon. So I thought that's pretty awesome, dude, because it really does set up this, this fight has been going on for a long time. It really sets up the universe, and that's something that I've always really the lore. Yeah, yeah, I've always really liked about Power Rangers and like all that stuff. It's like they always have this really rich lore, and I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's one thing I love about Q Rangers specifically, because you could tell that they're taking a whole bunch of components from all the different seasons. Right. Number one, high ranger count. Obviously, very SPD Decker Ranger-ish. Right. Um, individual even like um, um, uh, anthropomorphic animals being able to hench in and having like, um, you know, like the commander, Lombo being able to hench in and be a commander and still being able to hench in. That's very SPD as well. Yeah. Uh, we do have, do we have a giant bull, which is completely from like Lost Galaxy. Totally. Or Gingaman, you know what I mean? And we have a Shinobi star, which is a random insert. We have a chef, like we have, we have a, we have a wolf ranger. We have a wolf that's ranger, that's a fur. Awesome. Like it's seriously, straight up awesome. Like, like, say what you want about like you know that that's awesome. That is awesome. And the thing is, like, we've never seen a furry ranger before. We've never seen a cast like this. We've never seen a cast like this. And here's the here's the funny part: like silver and gold, which is typically a powerhouse. Six. Well, six and powerhouse characters. Yeah. These two are just BN thieves, and they're just kind of goofy. They're just doing their thing. If anything, orange is kind of the badass color now. Like, orange is starting to become, like, a hard-hitting character. Because, dude, I love the heck out of Stinger. I love those type of characters, though. I love those type of I, Gaara I like... from Naruto, from the Sand People, kind of like, I'm too good for this. All I got to do is say five words in the whole episode. But <laughs> everybody else can have all your buttons. You can have all your lines. All I got to say is... Let's go. I, jo I I generally don't like characters like that, though. You and Joe, see? You and Joe. I like those characters. Char characters like that are just, they're so, you know, they have to be done a certain way or I don't like them. Because otherwise, they're really predictable. And I, like, I just, what do you mean? Um, so, he, he's he's the Sasuke character. He's the Gara character. He's the Gara character more he, than Sasuke, he, though. He's, he's, the, he's the, like, no, you're all weighing me down. I'm going to go my own way. But is he, though? I mean, he's just more like, dude, guy a few words. You know what I'm saying? Like, even in this fight, he's kind of like... I feel like... Ah. 
you know, he, he works with the team and I get that, but he's like, he feels like Sasuke in that way where he's like, you know, I'm, I'm here to help out and do the thing, but I would rather work alone. This is the reason why I do like these characters because it's like, well, the fact of the matter is his, his character by nature and design is lone wolfish yes. because he is a double agent. He you know, is a spy. He is from a, a harsh planet. And obviously his backstory is he lost his, uh, you know, a person very, very important to him. And yeah. he has a brother, more on his brother later, that type of thing. So he's a tragic, more of a tragic character. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, oh, we actually, we don't know if he lost, but he lost his, like, his people because of his, oh, you know what, he is a Sasuke character. You're absolutely right. Because yeah. his brother, I didn't, yes, in that sense, his, he was a Sasuke character in terms of his backstory, but he carries himself more like a Gaara character. No, I totally now. agree. You know what I'm saying? You but, know what, what, now that you finally said that out loud, that he's a lone wolf character, I'm very happy that they didn't do that to Garo. Uh, Garu. Garu, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm very happy they didn't typically make him the lone wolf. No, I love that too, because he's like the piccolo of the series, where yeah. it's like, if, if um, Stinger is more Vegeta, Garu is definitely more of the uh, the piccolo in the sense like, hey, because I mean, in the first episode, him and Lucky go at it on yeah. the beach. Yeah, because that's what I mean. It's like, Sentai is very like, um, notorious for like, having a, a trope and just like going all out with it like just like sticking with the stereotype they like, like i was oh, about to say stereotypes it's, it's a it's a wolf and let's make him a lone wolf but i'm very glad that they didn't do that this time around well everybody's kind of different in that sense like the robot probably has the most personality out, out of everyone yeah and that's you know what, what i mean? really like, appreciate balance, about the series balance is a droid but he's like an over the top type of droid champ is a robot but he's a guy that works out what by the way he has no muscles so i don't understand there's it. no point for him but, actually i wonder if there is i wonder if there's some like weird backstory behind the, the that. The doctor's just like, he needs a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna make him lift heavy stuff around the ship. It's fine. It's totally fine. <laughs> He's gonna have a purpose and it's gonna look awesome. But, and then like, for instance, um, um, freaking um, Raptor. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like a dainty character like her called Raptor. And you know, she's like the, the ship's navigator and communicator. And she's probably one of the dude. She has a cool aesthetics, and when she's when she's henching too, when she's transformed, she has yeah. the wings, and she's the angel, and she's the fast star dude. She, by far, she had one of the best up until up, 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 yeah, up until today, up until the commander, she had one of the best introductions as a pink ranger Definitely. in ranger history. Cut the crap. One of the and this is the first time we had a pink later introduction as right. opposed to it being a part of the core team. Mm -hmm. So I think that's kind of badass. So actually, now that you said it, yeah. her name is Raptor. I imagine like you're cut coming up against a team yeah. like and the pink ranger goes up and like red's like hey raptor will take care of you it's like you look at her it's like why why is she called raptor i'm worried she's pink you know what it is <laughs> and she has fairy wings <laughs> what's what's happening if i was the bad guys and they were just like hey go get him raptor okay get raptor everybody circles garu they're like no that's not me that's not me <laughs> <laughs> i'm not raptor no that's not raptor, raptor. <laughs> that one <laughs> no 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 he said raptor you're a raptor yeah! That's kind of terrifying. That's horrible. Absolutely horrible. It's like having a really buff guy come up to you with a, Hey, you wanna fight? I'll fight you. Mike Tyson? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, okay, go get him. And like you said, a little... Speaking of little guys, I mean, Kotaro. Koto, so, Kotaro. Kotaro. Ko Kota Kotaro. Kotaro. Kotaro? Kotaro? Kotaro. I think it's Kotaro. I think it's Kotaro. Okay, fine. If you want to get really technical, whatever. Okay. Y'all know who we're talking about. If you want to be, you know, genuine Japanese-y and stuff. But no, but Kotaro, he's on the ship. And yeah. he's the ship babysitter at this point. Like, dude. I love that. He's a baby. It's so funny. But you know what he is? He's a baby lucky. Yeah. He is a baby lucky. He's, he, literally, he's, he just decides. I can't wait to see the tenure after. Oh, dude. That would be so dope. I love stuff like that, though. You know what, though? If they do something like that, because he's like the second, the second kid in, um... Sentai history there's, to become a ranger? Yeah, there's um There's a third? Really? There's uh Is there another kid? I don't King, think so. King ranger. I think King Ranger I think Kima Ranger. King Ranger does I will count King Ranger. King Ranger was a teen. You're absolutely was right. Was he really? But, yeah, oh, he was. King That's Ranger right. was like was it he did Bruce Lee sounds by the way when he fired. It was, ah! That wasn't it. But point is, <laughs> <laughs> but point is, we had at least three. <laughs> Producer JD's dying right now. Hey, you know, J D D DJ tries. He doesn't always do it. So <laughs> there's like three adolescent rangers, including Kotaro. Well, obviously King Ranger has to be an adult at this point. But King Ranger was also thousands of years old. Right. You know what I mean? So he was kind of suspended. I'm like, I'm, I'm Kiba Ranger I'm was playing. a little dick. Kiba Ranger was a little troublemaker. Like, we all see the clips online when you look up Kiba Ranger. This White Ranger, which was our Mighty Morphin White Tommy, which is why Tommy all of a sudden, had, Tommy all of a sudden had a personality when his debut as White Ranger. Like, all right, let's go! Woohoo! Yeah! Like, Tommy, calm the hell down. Lord. 
Then calm the hell down. Like, oh man, I thought you were controlling this thing. Whoa, sure could have fooled me. Okay. Sure could have fooled me. All right. <laughs> yeah. So animated because I'm hyped up on all this white. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, it was amazing. So we have Keeper Ranger <laughs> from from Die Ranger. So he's a kid. Kotaro's a kid, and he's just pretty much lucky. Like, you know what? I want to be a Q Ranger. Yeah. This is my planet. I represent. Oh, dude, he represents Earth. That's kind of cool. Actually, that's kind of dope that he that's, actually does represent Earth. That's really yeah. Because nobody else is. Everybody else is from their 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 sectors, their systems, and blah 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 blah. He represents Earth, mm -hmm. and the hope for the planet Earth would be a child. He it, he's he's the guy of the series. He is the guy, absolutely but right. But in child form. But when you think about it. Child form. <laughs> because children He's are... He's fun-sized. Children are this big, by the way. They are. <laughs> They're this big. But here's the thing. But, like, the cool thing about Sentai is... Well, cool, depending on your point of view. Like, they really do emphasize the power of the children's laughter and the children's smiles. Like, they were, like a lot of introductions. Like, for instance... You know, a lot of are, Sentais do that. Yeah. A lot of Sentais focus on, hey, the joy of the children or the life of the children or the laughter of the children. Like, Okaiju even, like, hey, these young adventurers to protect the mm -hmm. smiles of the children. Um, Tokyuja. Heavy on the children aspect because of imagination. Oh, yeah, definitely. Imagination! Um, Shinkinger also does that. Shinkinger is a good one. Yeah. Yep. Uh, they, they always focus on it. And so it's, re it's a really big prominent part in Q-Ranger. And, I, I, you know, yeah. they're, they have to save everyone. They have to make everyone happy. They have to make everyone believe in them. Because, sure, sure. you know, as far as everyone knows, these, these are outsiders. You know, they're just random, like, spandex heroes that came from the sky. And, you know, this isn't... This isn't the shared universe. This isn't the movie verse where you know how like in Sentai there's the each series is their own until yes. until the movie universe where and then crossover galore and then the big Tyson and stuff happens. But nothing with the exception of Goat Kaiger, they never like um mix up in series. Oh, and the ninja also technically. Sure, sure, sure. Um but you know each series, far, each series stands alone. Yeah, as as far as anyone knows, these Kyu Rangers are the only Sentai warriors on the planet. And so you know, these are these are new to them, so they have to win everyone's respect, and especially now with Ryu Commander, yeah. you know, this is just another person to add into the mix. See, one thing I do love about Sentai is, I feel like, well, obviously Sentai's been around a lot longer than Rangers, obviously. but they've, they, their formula is so concrete that they're able to do crossovers. Like, children know how to treat things, you know what I mean? They, they know, like, okay, this is for the movie, this is for the series. Every time a series starts over, the series just starts over, you know right. what I mean? Like, there's no question. As opposed to us, I feel like as Power Ranger fans in the U.S., we're kind of like, we okay, were... so, oh wait, so is, is Chip Lin's verse... Like, one separate universe, is there a pocket universe? And what about SPD? How far in the future is SPD? That's, you know what? Yeah. You know what? The Zord on there, on the other hand, I'm not even entirely sure if it really does match up chronologically, because when you think about it, like, we try to poke holes so much. You know, like, I real that's something I really appreciate about the Power Ranger verse, but we got spoiled by one, Mighty Morphin 1, 2, 3, and then Alien, Alien and then Zeo, and, and Turbo. Turbo. You know, it's all and connected. Space. And I love that. I we, personally love that. We got spoiled by the soap opera that actually did have a continuity. Yeah. Yeah. And whereas Sentai, everything is its own until, you know, you have Ninja or Gokaiger. But here's the beauty about Sentai, though. When you think about it, like, Sentai is actually able to... Like, for instance, when Gokaiger happened, you still get those actors back. You are able to do the crossovers you want to see. You know right. what I mean? You are able to see those Tyson movies. For those who don't know, Tyson movies are like a huge... Kind of like an the Avengers... Huge Avengers times 100. The, the, you know they broke records, right? With Superhero no, Tyson? No. Yeah. So Superhero Tyson actually broke a record uh, when it first aired about um, the most suit actors on one set. Oh, dude, that's beautiful. Yeah. So, and, and it's so we have a world record. And, and then it's still continuing to grow. And it's so cool because you do get all these outfits that they do salvage or recreate just for these scenes. You mm -hmm. do get to see Go Ranger, which is like the very first Sentai, which is kind of like our Mighty Morphin is our first one. You get Go Ranger, which is like the first Sentai, mixed with the current ones, mm -hmm. mixed with somebody in the middle, mixed with somebody three-fourths along the way. And for the kids, they're just like, look at our Senpais. Yay, Go Powers I haven't seen before. Okay, clap. New Powers! Clap. They win. Yay. Go Prism! I got a free toy with my movie ticket. Me. You know what I'm saying? That's DJ as a kid, by the way. <laughs> Screw you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Screw all of you guys. So anyways. Hashtag DJ as a kid. DJ as a kid. He has a very clappy hand, apparently. Yeah! <laughs> DJ just claps when he's happy. Uh, go good guy. <laughs> <laughs> this is pre-puberty DJ where I just sound like a drag queen and shit. <laughs> so, but in any case, um, so yes, we have, dude, Ryu Commander. And that's what I love about it because it went straight up Dragon Ball Z. We uh, we know that the commander still needs to save Spada. Yes. We got super off track by the way. We oh, saw no, the, totally the, 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 the commander. 
Hench and hang on is what we do. We just nerd. But so the the commander, the commander, what's it called? He he still needs to save uh, Spada. But you know the whole team says we're gonna save him. We're gonna save him. But what does the commander do? Sneaks out by himself. Mm -hmm. Lucky knows he's gonna do it. Intercepts him. And um, oh, speaking of which, it was kind of a clever play on John Ken Pon, which is basically paper rock scissors in Japan. John Ken Pon. So he mm. plays paper rock scissors with Lucky. And but in this version they call it. Uh, John Coupon, so Q meaning the sphere. I get it. You know, I it's actually, I actually didn't realize that. I got it. I get what you're trying to do. Play on words, kind of like saying "oh, Q." I get ha. it. It's it's cute. It's cute for it's what it ha. is. You're funny. Chuckles. I get that reference, Captain America. <laughs> so, so yeah. I mean, so he pretty much knocks out Lucky, but he does it in such an anime kind of way. Yeah. Like punch in the gut, pass out. I don't know. I've ever been punched so hard that you passed out. That no. <laughs> I've always wanted. I don't think so. I think anyway. that's an interesting way that anime usually depicts that kind of stuff too, where it's just like chop against the head. Okay, that I can understand, maybe, but it has to be a hell of a chop. It has to be. It has like to be a hell of a Vulcan. Perfect, grip. like in the. Right in the nape. Can you imagine? Like you try to do that and you just do it and you miss <laughs> and you're like, oh, what the, what was that for? Sorry, sorry. But you know what? That would work on me if I was like the aggressor and somebody tried to karate chop me. I would feel so confused. I'd be like. All my anger is gone now because now I just want to know what the hell that was. What? It was like, what? Dish, like You could have punched me in the face, you could have punched me in the gut, but you just chopped me in the weirdest spot in my neck. Like now I just need a massage. <sighs> That's just really convenient. Give me money, so, you're paying for my massage. Exactly. It's like, you know, this is inconvenient on so many levels. <laughs> so the commander goes, and this is really cool because, uh, well, the... We got Champ and the BN Thieves still doing the Indiana Jones thing because they had to find the Pixis. Oh, yeah. The Pixis globe, and I thought that was a cute way of like, okay, we can't have all 11 Rangers, but they're, Budget. they're, they're not going to be there in time. It's fine. They're, it's, it's, it's Sentai. Budget. Budget. Rainbows. <laughs> but so the commander goes off, res tries to rescue uh, Spada, does a fairly decent job. The rest show up. And dude, you know it's a badass episode when the uh, person who henshins gets a background song. Mm -hmm. You know it's going to be a good episode when that person that henshins has their own track with words sounding all anime glorious in the background. And dude, I love that they had to pull the Dragon Ball Eternal Dragons as far as like all their Q spheres come together. Oh my god. And a freaking dragon pops up. It was... <laughs> <laughs> it was Dragon Ball Z. It was completely it, it, Dragon it, it, Ball it, it, it Z. It was straight DBZ. Like straight up, the only thing was missing was your wish has been granted. I, I am a little peeved. I'm more so like, why that it's like the power of togetherness and friendship changed this Kutama into an actual chosen Kutama. But when you think about it, I mean, it's 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 really interesting because this series is obviously very comedic. Yeah. But it's also it made me laugh. Don't get me wrong. But it was like really. But, oh. but it's also very. Um, but it's also very drama driven. Mm -hmm. But it's also very sci fi, obviously. Yeah. But there's also very much like a kitty element, like in the terms like like Lucky. He found his strictly from willpower. Mm -hmm. Lucky strictly got his from willpower. But Lucky's an exception to that rule. He's ridiculous. Okay. Up. Yes. Ridiculous aside. Let's put him aside. But even like the B and thieves, like but everything about Lucky, you have to suspend your disbelief a little bit because like, for instance, the BN Thieves and him finding the BN Thieves was straight luck. Mm -hmm. Him coming across Garu was straight luck. Like, Ridiculous is part of the show because oh, no, yeah. Lucky is a part of the show. Like, he's the primary driving force of this show. But yes, it was the power of the Eternal Dragon. He pops up, says, what's your wish? And he says, I want to be a ranger. He says, your wish has been granted. And then the Dragon Ball separate. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. I'm dead serious, but I will say this. This, I miss this type of mech. I miss this type you of mech. You don't get that. We don't get... I think the last one we got was Red... Red Dragon. Yeah. Well, Serpent Terra, if you want to count that. If you that. want to get really technical, yeah, Serpent Terra. Serpent Terra had that whole wavy kind of... I want to say... Oh, you know what? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Even in um, uh, Mega Force or Ghost Sager, that dragon was oh, more, of a, more of a bird. Snake. Yeah. Yeah, but in terms of like an actual flying like dragon S type of yeah. thing, the last time we've had like that type of like... Ghost Sager. Was it Ghost Sager, though? I mean, Ghost Sager, I mean, the dragon moved. It wasn't really, like, serpenty though. He wasn't really serpenty. Yeah. Like, that's what I liked about this one. Like, our, our producer, Jay-Z, he's, like, he's, getting he's his, doing his the, little... I, I can't remember of any, like... I don't know. Why, like, we're, actually, we're actually feeding it off, too. It's like... The first time was better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the first time was better. The first time we did it. I was like, like oh, gosh, I'm When, over when here. we didn't try, we were just, like, actually going there. <laughs> So, but no, I mean, it's actually a really cool fight. And honestly, Q Ranger uh, continues being a show that I love the fights. Like, right. the fights are so well choreographed. Matter of fact, dude, there's a cool part where the commander shoots with his staff and he 
shoots the bullets. Like, like these, these freaking assassins are that like shooting at Ryu Commander, and he like shoots the bullets, break through them. And <laughs> what bullets? Like, dude, it was super Matrix like, and it was so badass. And then you know, let's get to the mech fight. The mech fight is really cool. Again, the dragon is really awesome. The the, the, the head's kind of goofy, where it, ha- it kind of looks like a cue bone from from Pokemon. Yeah, but it does have like a cue bone, like kind of like kind of helmet. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the, but the, but the, the Zord fight was really cool. It was an individual Zord fight primarily. Right. And uh, it was badass. And honestly, the whole time I'm seeing Ryu Commander in the cockpit, and dude, I was just loving it. You know what I'm actually wondering? Because, you know, especially since he is the commander, how often we're going to see him in battle? You know, how, how often do you think he's going to be, like, a recurring, like, character in more form? I think we're going to get a lot of, um, like, for instance, um, Shadow Ranger type of treatment, where he's going to be mm. the commander. Obviously, he's going to go as needed. But at the same time, we're still going to get the q where they have to pick their primary team. Right. And I Do you like think he's going to be put into that uh, roulette all the time? I don't think he's going to be included. Personally, I don't think he's going to be included. I think the commander's going to step in when needed. You yes. know what I mean? It is a he's going to be Kruger. He's, he's going to be Kruger. He's literally yeah. going to be Kruger. He's literally going to be Kruger. Everyone else is going to be put in the Q-Let. Now, obviously, for those who keep up with the scans or who those who like fast forward ahead, we have a few more ranges to look forward to. And I'm not even sure if they're considered power-ups. One is, co- spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, if you don't know already. Yeah. It's Kotaro. Kotaro, I'm sorry. Kotaro is going to be Sky Blue. We have another blue! We have a blue ranger! And the first time we've actually had a Sky Blue ranger, specifically a Sky Blue ranger, so Which that's cool. I think is next episode. I it believe. is It is yes. the next episode. And then we have a Ho ranger. Ho. Ho ranger! <laughs> We're professionals. Um, there's... <laughs> DJ's broken. So... What are you saying? ho Okay. Well, anyways, we have that ranger coming. Hold and he's a phoenix kind of soldier. Like, he's like a soldier type ranger, and he kind of reminds me of, uh, what's his face from uh, Time Force? Right. Um, uh, Quantum Ranger. Yeah. So he has dark accents. He looks a lot like Lucky, but obviously he's a phoenix. So that's the thing. It's like, hmm. He kind of looks he, like Magic Ranger Red, too. Have we confirmed or not whether he's going to be is enemy it, or well, a- anti-hero or what? I don't know. Here's the thing. Like at first, I thought it was an upgrade to Lucky's power, and then come to find out, he might be an individual. I character. think I think he, as a ranger, is going to be individual. Well, there's another ranger who's white. The white one, I think, is a power. That's up. a power up. I I believe that's a power. He up. does have the same aesthetic. But I can't remember what the face looks like. The, right. Uh, I only remember the white. Yeah. Granted, but and, but he does have a red star. But yeah, but in in my opinion, I think that's the power up. I think that's the mid season power up before he goes like full on. Japanese battleizer. But ho Ranger is also... He also has a red star as well, right? Yeah. Oh, interesting. So right now, we at least confirm... Um, let's see. At least 14-ish Ranger suits. So by the time this season is over, including movie, how many Rangers do you think we're going to get? Including movie? Yeah, you know what? I feel like 16 is a good round number. I would say 15 for sure. I'm almost willing to say 20. That's a lot of range. Yeah, I know, but like That's Toei's amazing. really pulling out the stops on this. That's like we're only range. what seven episode. Like what, nine. What is what episode was this one? Nine. This is nine. We're only on episode nine, and we already have like plus our team. Like this yeah. is this is incredible. Yeah. You know, and then ten, we have twelve, and then we already have two more like confirmed. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'll tell you what, dude. I mean, again, I I like this world. Um, I feel like we need to jump back into the Stinger Big Brother arc. I think we need to get back into the Dark Matter I don't Shogun. Think gonna, yeah, I don't Shogun. think that's going to happen until like halfway through. No, no, sure. But I mean, again, in terms of like, even like reminding us what the good fight is. Oh, yeah, you know what I mean? definitely. Like, like really, because we did get a little sidetracked with the assassins. You know what I mean? And getting the backstory of the commander a little bit, which is great. I mean, I love knowing more about, right, our, right. More about our rangers. But in one sense, I almost feel like the rangers were introduced too fast. But in another sense, I feel like the story could be a little bit faster. Right. But not uh, to say I don't love it, because well, I do. One of the things I, I have a hope for in Q Ranger is that I just I don't want them to fall too much into the monster of the week. Uh, I don't think they have, though. Monster of the day thing. Because, I, I mean, they sort of kind of have, but they haven't really. What I want to happen is, like, you know, a lot of character development. And, you know, they have all this potential to make it, like, really character-driven and, like, Oh, there's this one enemy that we can't beat yet, so we'll fight them a couple times, right. and then they'll retreat, and then they'll come back again. You know, obviously we'll have a little bit back and forth, but you know, no, I'm, no, no, I'm hoping for, I'm hoping for more. So you want more the, overarching villains and yeah. a central, a central villain to focus on? Because here's the thing: like, I actually don't think they're doing Monster of the Week in the traditional sense because 
the reason why I'm saying that is because what's interesting is these characters, these monsters are very unique. They're scary looking monsters. They're space oh, yeah. monsters, but I'm actually having a hard time remembering them. I'm actually having a hard actually, time now that you remembering. Yeah. You know what I mean? I yeah. mean, aside from the assassins and aside from like the big bad guy and maybe like the pink, the pink crocodile because he was a freaking pink crocodile oh, or whatever who, right. who ate people's dreams. I'm actually have a I'm actually having a hard time remembering. Ridiculous. It was awesomely amazing because Raptor beat him with the power of a, <laughs> No, it wasn't like he beat him with like the power of imagination like holy crap. He, he's a Tokyo jerk. He's in, something. In imagination. In Stand behind <laughs> the line. But no, I mean, I, I'm just having a hard time remembering because honestly, the big threats is the Shogun, right? Sh uh, the Empire, the Emperor, whatever. And then we have the Assassins, who's really cool. But the actual monsters, like they always introduce these magistrates and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I have a hard time remembering them. No, yeah, I, I agree. I can't remember a lot of them actually. Now that you like mentioned, it. Uh, other than Pink Crocodile and like Pink Crocodile for the win. Yeah. And like the foot soldiers, but every you see those every episode, so we already know what they look like. Do we like. have an official general of this series yet? Like, do we have an official? I guess there's one, right? Who's the one that brought Stinger on board? Yeah, was I was gonna one? say, like, I, I can't remember what he looks like. Because we don't have like a Goldar or like even like a Fury in this one. I don't think like they've really delved, jumped into like villains yet. I think it's like. They have, but not they didn't highlight. Not they as highlight. much as they usually do around this time in the series. Mm -hmm. Usually, at this time of the series, it's like, uh, you know, we have the whole like, you know, we have the whole villain motive. But now we want to know more about the villains, and we haven't really like jumped into that. It's all Rangers, this, this, this. It is very Ranger focused. Yeah, it's very Ranger focused. Which is not terribly a bad thing, but you know, to make the show really work, I really want to see more about the villains. You know what? You know what's missing from the series? An actual Motley crew, like an actual crew of, like for instance, um, Dino Charge slash Kyo It had the crew, it had the the, the girl, it had um, uh, um, Lokiro, Lakiro, uh, Lucky, Lakiro, whatever. Yeah, um, Lucky, Lucky We had the Fury. We had point is we had like the core group. Right. We don't have that in the season. We don't no. have like a main because everyone is Kyojiro. spread around the universe and everything. Well, the threats are multiple. They're multifaceted. Yeah. So we do have the pyramid scheme. We do have like the main emperor, the Shogun. But in terms of actually having like a core group, like Tokyo, Tokyo had like the main, like oh boy was trying to get married. Like even Gokaiger had that, and they had that that space theme too. Yeah, so no, absolutely. Gokaiger had like the uh, the um, the prince and uh, the emperor and um, his bodyguards. Bodyzorg. Bodyzorg. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and uh, the, the the girl with the ray gun that made him grow. Uh, green name. Green Girl. Um, what was her name? Because yeah, there was an episode where the guy kept saying it because he was in love with her. I can't remember. I can't remember right now either. I'm sorry, Gokaiger. I love you. Both. I love you too, too. Like, you're, like, <laughs> you're like my heart. <laughs> but anyways, I feel like we just need an established crew because right now we know the threats are the Shogun. We know like the hierarchy. We have Stinger's brother who we know works for him. We also have the guy that brought on Stinger aboard. So I guess he's supposed to be the general, but I, I'm having a hard time remembering him. So anyways, I'm gonna, if you had to rate this episode, and that's pretty much it because we have the big Zord fights. Yes. And I thought there was a cute little moment at the end where, again, it's called Q Ranger, which translates into Nine Rangers. Yeah. So the commander's like, you know what I hated? The commander actually says, okay, guys, do me a favor. Enough of the insubordination, okay? I'm like, dude, you're a commander. Don't, you don't ask permission. You don't ask permission from your team. That's not something you do as a badass purple rain-wielding kind of dude with a pimp staff. <laughs> you just don't do that. Pimp Ranger. Pimp Ranger. Hand justice. Pimp commander. Hand me my powder. <laughs> okay, but you don't ask permission. <laughs> But the thing is, if the show is called Q Ranger, which Ooh. means nine rangers. And so he had the good idea of saying, let's call it Jude Ranger, which is ten rangers. And they're like, nah, no, nah, yeah. it's still nine rangers. It's yeah. still about us. So if he had you're a extra, you're, you're not going to be in every episode. <laughs> you're lucky if your suit shows up. Okay. Okay. Dang. Um, I actually would say like his his suit is probably one of my favorite Q Ranger suits though. Yes, uh, all all the Q Ranger suits are really shoots. good. Suits. The shoots are great. The shoots are amazing. No. Shoots are so but bad. yeah, like real talk, they're so real talk. good. But <laughs> they're so good. They're so unique too. I love the. I still to the. I mean, I keep talking about it, but the speckles in their visor, the, the glitter in the their glitter visors, in their visors. It's such a so minuscule thing, and if you don't look up close, though. yeah. You don't see it. It's one of those times that, like, when people watch Q Ranger, yeah. you know, they're like, oh, yeah, just watch anything, like, as long as you can watch it. 
if if I can if you can find it in HD high quality, yeah. watch it because yeah. all those details matter. The the ribs, the outlines, the stitching, the the the, the little bolts and the bedazzles it's and all so, that. The furries mm. and like like literally I feel like most of the budget went to these suits. They had to have. Yeah. They just had to have. Because these suits, matter of fact, I, I, I would even argue, like, again, even though I can't remember the monsters, they're good-looking monsters. They're not cheesy, clowny monsters. They look they look like space monsters. Yeah. It's like the opposite of Tokyo, where all the budget went into the, uh, the villains and then not into the rangers. Yeah. Granted, we did have a lot of variations of the colors, but... Yeah, I, I, I digress. I digress, yeah. So, wait. So Okay, question to you. Do you feel like Tokyo would have worked here? Yes. I agree. I I, I, agree. I think Tokyo is something that we could have definitely needed. They could have completely RPM'd it and given it a completely overhaul in terms a complete overhaul in terms of dude. I'll be honest with you, the, the rails on their visors to me look very reminiscent of medieval knights. Yeah. I've always thought that dude, they should do something between trains and knights. Like, dude, it's not that hard. And I think it would be I thought it would be brilliant. I think I don't know, Tokyo uh, even if they brought over Brought it over exactly as his story and all with the power of imagination. Uh, I mean, I don't know about that. If if you like tweaked it a certain way, because Power Rangers has that way of making crap work. So you know, I, I digress. It could have been good, it could have been bad. But if we brought it over, I definitely think it could have been like a really good series. I'll leave it at this. I feel like they could have used the suits and they could have used the uh, the uh, the theme and made something out of it. Made something out of the it. The reason that they, they didn't get brought over was because of trains, but yeah. I don't. I think that would have worked. I mean, there is still some train properties for kids that like work. So uh, you know, yeah. colorful trains and Power Rangers. I think that would have worked. And then we're coming off of a season of Dino Charts, but you're going from dinosaurs to trains. I get it. I mean, not not the strongest transition, but mm -hmm. anyways, rating this right, episode right. one through one through five. Cute damas. What would you rate this episode? I would definitely give this five. Uh, Q Thomas. I'm going to give this a 4.5, so I'm pretty much with you, dude. It's a cool introduction. It's a great episode. To the Pimp Ranger. It, is the 0.5 Spada, is that? Spada would dock a whole point, so you decide, <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know what, we're back, we're down to 04. We're down to 04. We're, you know what, screw it. We're just down to 04. But the, pimp, the introduction Ranger. of the Pimp, the Pimp Ranger was pretty great. I do like knowing he was a hothead, and the Bear Commander was a great introduction to me. I thought Ooh. that was a rich lore. And I do like the uh, the Serpent uh, Zord. Everything about this episode that. was just so good. And the Dragon Ball Z, we're calling on Shenron to make this person a ranger was kind of amazing, because through the power of the Kyutamas, told me your wish, and I will grant it. That was pretty great. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z, straight up. Yes, totally. It was a dragon. It was, it was a, I mean, no matter how you look at it. it no matter how you slice that cake, it's a, it's a cake. It's a dragon. So... Anyways, um, I don't think we have questions or comments from this episode, and if we do, I think we had like a couple. So, anyways, we're gonna let it build up, you guys. Once this Henshin Hangout goes up, look out for it on Fridays. Get Please. those comments in because we actually do film the very next day. So, yes. anyways, Daryl, where can we find you once again? You can find me on all social media um, at Daryl J Delphin, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, I'm most active on Instagram, but you can follow me anywhere and I'll respond back to you guys. Sweet. Well, you can pretty much find me on Instagram at dj.2.rivers, and that's pretty much it. So that does it for this episode of the Ooh. Henshin Hangout. That's a great episode. Love this Purple Ranger. Love this cast. Love this suit. Can't wait to see the Sky Blue Ranger. Can't wait to see... More about just the backstory. Make sure to watch the next episode. Definitely. Absolutely. So make sure you hit that like button and make sure you hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with everything trending in geek pop culture. Henshin! Henshin!